everyone, it's Sevi. So when I first reviewed Yunjin in my first impressions video, I said something like this. Yunjin's damage bonus is definitely nowhere near as high as the buffs that Bennett give. However, after testing her a bit more, I realized that more often than not, that wasn't true, and Yunjin is a lot more impressive than I initially thought her to be. So in this video, I'd like to share how I put Yunjin to the test. In fact, I decided to get at least three constellations of Yunjin just to see with my own eyes and show you in practical tests how big the difference is. I'm going to pit her against a fellow 4-star and longtime champion attack buffer, Bennett. Of course, Bennett offers a different kind of kit and can buff more than just normal attacks. But since Yunjin is hyper-focused on normal attacks, then will she surpass Bennett in that regard? I'll be testing both on three characters, Yarmia, a physical DPS official, and Noelle to answer that question. While there are many more characters out there that Yunjin can work with, these three should provide us enough conclusions to work with. Let's begin! We'll first go through their builds. Bennett is equipped with a 4-piece Noblesse as his best in slot support set. He's also using an Alley Flash, which is his best 4-star gacha weapon for buffing attack thanks to its high base attack. He's currently at level 80, but the difference from level 90 is negligible since he only gets an additional 13 base attack stat from 80 to 90. As for Yunjin, she's equipped with a 4-piece Husk set and Favonius Lance. Now some of you might think, why not Deathmatch? While I also know that that will yield slightly higher defense stat, I decided against Deathmatch for a few reasons, mainly that it's a paid weapon unlike Bennett's Alley Flash. Additionally, an R1 Deathmatch's defense bonus isn't that significant, it needs a 2 enemy condition to activate which is also more impractical to test and the Favonius Lance energy effects are more favorable than the small defense buff. In any case, if you want Yunjin on a deathmatch then just imagine the buff and resulting damage increase to be slightly higher. Yunjin is also at level 90 which this time has a more noticeable effect since defense increase scales much higher than base attack and that's the only way to get more defense for her defense percent bonuses to scale from. This accounts Bennett is C6 so I can't do practical tests with with non-pyro melee characters, but since we're testing Fischl, Noel, and Yarmia, those won't be a problem. We'll pit Yunjin first at C0, then look at the increases of her C2 and C3, which I think is where her constellation's added capabilities can fairly match a high constellation Bennett. Both their burst talent levels will be equal, considering the constellations. So with their builds discussed, let's now put them to the test. First up is Yoimiya, who will have Yunjin as her new best friend. This Yoimiya has a crowned normal attack, is equipped with a 2-piece Crimson and 2-piece Glad, plus an R1 Thundering Pulse. As for their team, we'll activate Pyro Resonance in both comparisons, while Yunjin's passive bonus will have the 3 levels activated due to 3 elements in the party. One thing to take note is that since this is a C6 Bennett, he adds 15% Pyro damage bonus to Yoimiya. Most people decide not to unlock Bennett's final constellation, so that buff won't apply. We'll just have to mentally bring down Yoimiya's damage results if we only want to use a C5 Bennett reference. Here is their test side by side with Bennett on the left and Yunjin on the right. So Bennett's total damage output is higher than Yun Jin's, but we'll notice that for the first normal attack, Yun Jin yielded a higher increase in damage. That's because it had a low normal attack damage multiplier, so Yun Jin's flat buff in proportion appears big. But once we get to the subsequent attacks which have big normal attack multipliers, Yun Jin's flat buff in proportion appears smaller. We can see here in action how well Yun Jin helps attacks with low multipliers, but less so if they have higher multipliers. Now with the next test using Fischl. No resonance will be activated with a full rainbow team, meaning that Yunjin's passive bonus will be at its highest level. This is a physical main DPS Fischl that's on a 2-piece Bloodstained 2-piece Pale Flame set on R3 Rust and normal attack level 8. And here they are side by side. We'll also activate Superconduct on the Registine to boost her attacks. Now we can see that Yunjin completely overtakes Bennett's buff by a huge margin. Considering that Yunjin is at C0, this is an impressive feat. You'll notice that damage increase is higher on the first hits, then it starts diminishing on the later hits. Again, it highlights the fact that Yunjin is a huge boost at buffing characters with low base damage multipliers thanks to her flat damage bonus rather than Bennett's attack bonus. Now let's check out Noelle. 
both teams will have Georesonance and only two different elements, since most DPS Noel teams are usually triple Geo or full Geo. Noel's normal attacks are level 8, and she's on a full husk set alongside Yunjin, so we'll ensure they both have full stacks when activated. She's also sporting an R1 red horn. Here's the side by side. In Noelle's case, the numbers are pretty close, with Bennett beating Yunjin by a little overall. This already hints that if Yunjin is at C3 or even C2, she's definitely going to beat Bennett in this test. Now let's activate Yunjin C2, which adds 15% normal attack damage to your active character. In case you were only able to bring C2 Yunjin home, let's see how much value we get. First up is Yormia once again, and let's see the increase of Yunjin C2. Now for official on C0 Yunjin versus C2 Yunjin. And lastly, Noel. As expected, it closes the gap with Yoimiya and widens it with Fischl. And now Yunjin beats Bennett on Noel's normal attacks. Finally, let's see how much C3 adds to Yunjin. You get 3 additional levels to her burst. This time, let's see how Yunjin C3 compares with Bennett. Here's how it looks now on Yoimiya. So for Yoimiya, Yunjin didn't manage to beat C6 Bennett in terms of total damage, but she does come quite close. If Bennett's at C5, I'd reckon the gap will be much less. Not to mention, if we'll compare them on completely equal constellations. A C6 Yunjin also means faster attack speed, which is very useful for someone like Yoimiya. As for Noel and Fischl, C3 Yunjin just widens the gap versus Bennett even more. And after seeing the damage difference of C2 and C3 on these three characters, I would say that C2 gives more value than C3, so even just settling with C2 Yunjin as an early constellation stopping point is very good. But overall, having put Yunjin to the test and seeing just how far her buff goes with her early constellations, I'm really impressed. She's still as niche yet flexible as she was at C0, but the fact that her buff can compete with one of our support Archon's Bennett is a feat that shouldn't be underestimated. If she's meant to be good at that one thing, then at least she does it very, very well. So for those of you who are still Bennettless but need someone to buff your normal attack DPS, Miss Yunjin of the Opera House is, I would say, your next contender for a top class support. I would highly recommend getting her free during the Lantern Rite if you're not pulling on the current banners. I was already in love with Yunjin before, but now I see the strength of her true colors. That's going to be all for this video everyone. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you soon. Take care!